to order the 20th meeting of the 2013 Common Council meeting, Monday, January 21st. Call the roll, clerk. Bellinger? Here. Boren? Here. Carlson? Here. Decker? Here. Donahue? Here. Hammond? Here. Heideman? Here. Toth? Here. Lassard? Here. Lewandowski? Here. Matichek? Present. Riesler? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Bercy? Here. Longerman? Excused. 15 present. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Approval of the minutes. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. I, make, uh, I move that we approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Is there any changes or additions? Three non clerk call the roll. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Here. Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kath? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Manichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Bellinger. Aye. 15. Motion carries. The public forum tonight. It will be Joel Wood. Is Joel Wood here this evening? Right there, yes, please. And could I have your address, please, Joel? 2914 South 15th Street, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. Okay. Um, I'd just like to start with um, the, what I think is the main reason for this, uh, this sewage backup, and there was construction being done about three weeks to a month prior to this, uh, not 10 feet away from where, uh, where this occurred. And um, my insurance company denied my claim because it was sewage from the, the city sewer line that um, they said I needed to file a claim with the city. Um, also, on my neighbors, if you look at your lineup, these are my neighbors. They, all of their insurance companies uh, told them the same thing. Um, I've got o over $4,000 worth of lost property, and um, basically I had a finished basement, and now I don't. Um, I missed almost a full day of work with the cleanup, um, plus all the the supplies, so um, that's pretty much it. That's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Joel. Is there any other? And I'd like to proceed with a proclamation for National Wear Red Day. If Eileen Dreska could join me. The proclamation reads as follows. Whereas Go Red for Women celebrates the extraordinary progress in women's heart health and recognizes <clears throat> the more need, no, more needs to be done in Sheboygan to safeguard women's health for generations to come. And whereas heart disease is the number one killer of women and whereas most women do not know heart disease is a woman's problem that they do not take seriously. And whereas the Heart Truth Campaign and the red dress symbol of building awareness for women's heart disease and risking empowering them to reduce their risk of heart disease. Now therefore, Sheboygan women need to take, care, take action to make heart health a priority for themselves and for their families and to become aware of heart disease risks and take action to control their risks. Therefore, I, Terry Van Akron, as mayor of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim Friday, February 1st, 
2013 as National Wear Red Day and encourage all citizens to work together to promote the health of all women and increase awareness of understanding of women and heart disease. Hi, everybody. Um, the reason that we got Terry involved is because uh, this is, heart disease in women is the number one killer of women, and a lot of people are, una are unaware of that. Um, one of the things that we really, really, really try to do is to better educate. Um, women need to be uh, diagnosed accurately, and we need to ensure that um, there's proper treatment given for people. I'd like to thank you for having, having me. I think this is a, what an honor this is. And um, you'll be seeing some things go up uh, through the course of the next week or so uh, up on 8th Street. We're, we're going to try to get the businesses to get a little bit more involved. It's the number one killer of women, and I thank you so much for having me. And thank you. Thanks, Terry. Thank you. Here's announcements, a couple things tonight. <coughs> Excuse me. The ice skating rink sponsored by Blue Harbor uh, is open for skating, located just west of the Triple Play building. Rental skates are available at Blue Harbor Rink. The rink has been flooded by off-duty firefighters, including our chief. Um, so we want to thank them for that, and it's open to the public. So thank you very much. Also, today is Martin Luther King Day. I did, uh, I was at a program at the Armory. Um, it's an honor to represent the city at, at programs in which Martin Luther King talked about community and being involved in community. Um, I'm proud of this community and how many things that we have people volunteer and take care of each other, and that's what it was all about. So um, glad that our community can celebrate and, and um, think about Martin Luther <coughs> King and the things that he did. Tonight, we also are going to be talking about um, the combined dispatch. Um, there's a lot of people to thank, and I'll do that now. Um, this is something that's been going on for 30 years. You all can look back in your career someday and say, you know, you were sitting here when this really did happen. Um, I want to thank, this has been going on for 30 years, but the discussion was just about dead. Uh, Alderman Hammond. Um, I want to thank you for your persistence and leadership. You sat down and got the ball rolling again, and um, something that I think we all thought was was not going to happen. Um, it looks like it's going to come to happen, and, and you need uh, to be recognized for your leadership and taking the part in that. Um, you and I and Chief Domagowski, Chief Herman, and Jim Momodio sat in through many um, sometimes interesting discussions with the, com with the c community, I mean with the county over the uh, last few months and it looks like we're finally coming to uh, closure on, on a good, uh, at a good end. So thank you for your leadership. Chiefs um, and um, J Jim Modio, thank you for your involvement too. Um, this was a long, hard, uh, discussion that we had and, and uh, thank, thank you guys for being involved uh, in this. Thank you for the county, um, the sheriff, Todd Preby, the county board chairman, um, Adam Payne, um, the county board administrator. Um, again, all of us working together finally did get something that after 30 years, um, I think we're gonna have a good result that's good for both the city and county. So thank you all for your, your hard work and for your leadership. Consent agenda. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, I move to accept and file our, all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, accept and pass all resolutions and general ordinances. 2-1 through 2-22, but I know somebody wants to pull some of those. So, Alderman Riesler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to uh, pull 2-5, two 2-6, five, two 2-7, two and 2-8, and you can put them all together for a separate vote. Second. We're going to pull in 
two five, two six, two seven, and two eight, and we'll vote on those separately. And the motion then on those will still be to accept and file. Is there any discussion on those four items? Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I didn't support them at, at finance, um, and I obviously don't want to support them uh, on the floor. Uh, the, the real short and, and gist of it is what um, actually what Mr. Wood talked about in the public forum. Um, the uh, water main had um, broken and eroded the soil between the water main and the sewer um, main and fell into that and broke it, uh, thus causing the sewer to back up. So it was kind of an unusual um, sewer backup. Um, and as Mr. Woods said, the insurance companies didn't cover anything. And, and um, I guess it's just my opinion that there might be a little bit more liability than what we, what we thought. So I'm going to not support filing it and vote no. Any other discussion? Any other discussion on 2, 5 through 2, 8? Alderman Bourne. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I wasn't at that finance committee meeting, so I'm just wondering what the rationale was for uh, the notice of disallowance. Is this past practice that we've done this? And it seems like what Alderman Raisler uh, described is kind of an unusual circumstance where we may, we may have some exposure. So. If Attorney McLean or somebody from the Finance Committee would like to explain that, please. Steve? Um, I can say that the uh, claims were turned over to the water utility initially, and they had their insurance company look at them. Uh, they recommended denying the claims on the basis that there was no negligence on the water utility's part or the city's part. Uh, the city staff looked at it, made the same recommendation to the uh, Finance Committee, the Finance Committee reported out with that same recommendation to deny on the basis that the city was not negligent. Alderman Moore. Well, when would the city be negligent under a situation like this? Is, there, is, it, is it even a gray area or is it just cut and dried that we're not negligent? Um, water mains break now and then. If uh, the city's, uh, the law is not that any time a water main breaks and somebody receives damage as a result that the city is liable for that. That's, those things happen and um, uh, we typically don't uh, approve those claims on the basis that uh, the city is not legally liable for those damages. I guess the rationale, uh, partially there is statutes uh, and the legislature are protective of governmental bodies from paying out a lot of claims and they're trying to protect the purse of the taxpayers and sometimes uh, innocent parties uh, bear the brunt uh, that's no doubt about that but uh, that's the recommendation thank you alderman donahue <clears throat> uh, thank you mayor um these are really cruel cases, as we talked about in finance, because um, absent a showing of negligence, as Attorney McLean said, on the part of the city, there is no recovery. Um, if you want to sue someone for having damaged you, you need to show that that person was somehow negligent, unless there's some sort of strict liability that applies. And there really is not strict liability here. It is a cruel result. And if you don't have a sewage backup endorsement on your homeowner's policy, you're out of luck there. But it's just one of those, not every wrong has a legal remedy. And that's why the Finance Committee voted to deny these claims. Not because of anything the homeowners did, or not at, at fault at all, but also the city was not at fault. These are, uh, as, as we understand it, these are just things that happen, and it's nothing that the city did wrong, and so that was the basis for denying the claim. Attorney McLean also indicated, which I think is really important for us to consider as we think about voting on this issue, that if we approve these claims now, anything that goes wrong at any time in the city with a water main or a sewage uh, line will be the city's responsibility. Even if the city was not negligent, even if there is no blame to be placed, 
And so from a, the perspective of just protecting the taxpayer dollars, I think it's really important that we do deny these claims, even though it, it is cruel and it is in some respects unjust. It, it is the law and I think that we really need to, 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 to stay with it because what we do now sets a precedent and if, that, if it's a bad precedent, then we have to live with that for quite a long period of time. Thank you. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mayor. I think I just need more specificity on what happened. The water main broke, but did I hear you say a pipe fell and broke the sewer line? And the sewer was the backup and not the water line? Did, some, did a pipe fall and break? And how did that pipe fall and break? So I need someone to give me clarity on the incident itself. I think part of the issue was that with the water main break, there was a lot of water that collected along the pipes there and washed out the, uh, the support for the pipe. And my understanding is it sank down and somehow, I don't know if it broke the sewer main or uh, affected the rings near the, uh, the manhole for the sewer, but the, all this volume of water from, from the water main that had washed out a lot of sand and everything ended up going down the manhole in the sewer, and that was too much water in the sewer and caused the backups. And the, uh, uh, most of the, the backups were a couple inches of water in the basements in about five houses. Uh, all in the vicinity of the intersection uh, near Mr. Wood's uh, place there. Uh, there was a lot of sand that was found in the basements that had washed out, and it was a matter of that the, nobody's, nobody knows for sure, but that water main had probably been broken for several days to a week, so there was big volume of water that was washing out this the uh, subsurface underneath the street there that was ended up causing kind of a domino effect. And, you know, Nothing I, fell. I can't really explain exactly how the water ended up in the basements, but that's, that's what the reports are, is that the, uh, the water main broke, ended up the fire hydrant that was there collapsed and I don't know if the fire hydrant had an impact on the sewer, but some way there the sewer uh, uh, started collecting a great volume of water and couldn't handle it all. Thank you. <clears throat> Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I feel some empathy for, for Mr. Woods as well. A um, number of years ago, the pump station on North and Third Avenue got struck by lightning, the battery backup failed, I experienced the same exact thing. Got no recourse from the city at all and it affected probably a dozen other of my neighbors. Um, uh, however, um, uh, you know, you, you think that you maintain your house in good order and, and that the, the city has, um, you know, its infrastructure in good order and you're doing everything you can as a citizen and, you know, through no fault of your own, you're experiencing uh, this mess that uh, happens. and. Um, I'm just wondering, a question for Attorney McLean, seeing as how we find the city has no neglect or fault in this instant, instance, is there a recourse from these homeowners now that we demonstrated there is no fault from the city that they can go back to their insurance companies and say, you know, can you relook at this again because there is no fault from the city? Uh, I'm just wondering why is this different than a tornado or straight line winds or anything else that would normally, be, you know, if there was no fault, that they could go back and, and have that looked at again. Attorney McLean? Um, yeah, I can't address whether the property owners or Mr. Wood's case, he was just a tenant. He didn't own the property, but um, I don't, couldn't tell you whether they have any recourse against their insurance carriers. Uh, from what Mr. Wood says, the insurance carriers are saying that they're denying coverage, and I don't dispute that. Um, the recourse uh, or from, from here is the city denies the claim, sends them notice. They've got 
six months in which to sue. They can sue, still sue the city. And uh, if it goes to court, most of these uh, would be small claims jurisdiction. They're under $5,000. Uh, if a court were to find that the city was uh, legally responsible, the court would uh, enter judgment accordingly. But uh, uh, I guess it's uh, our position that the city is not at fault and the court would not find the city negligent. And, and as uh, Alderman Donahue said, this, this isn't a strict liability situation. Um, cities, counties, governmental bodies are not held to a standard of strict liability in cases like this. Uh, you've got to show that there was some uh, action or inaction or omission on the city's part uh, for which the city would be liable. So the city went out and had just repaired it and did a was negligent in its repair. Uh, it'd be a different story. There's another claim on tonight that dealt with a manhole cover. And uh, individual uh, city employee working in that manhole that day. And uh, the recommendation of the Finance Committee is, is different on that claim. Uh, so staff looks at these, the, uh, the committee looks at them on an individual case-by-case -case basis and makes the determination uh, as to whether or not the city is legally liable. Now, if there's nothing to prevent the council from saying they're going to pay these claims, but as uh, Alderman Donahue also said, you're kind of opening the floodgates there uh, for other potential claims. Uh, you know, if you pay one where water main breaks uh, through no fault of uh, the cities, where is the stopping point? At, at what point do you say, well, we'll pay this claim, but not that claim where there's a water main break, uh, where <coughs> something happens to a sewer? Uh, it's uh, I don't know, there's, there's perhaps no no end to those sorts of things. So uh, streets, uh, we get a million pothole cases where cars <coughs> potholes uh, because the street isn't pristine does not mean that the city is negligent. Uh, we've got a standard of reasonable maintenance to maintain the infrastructure of the city and that's all the courts and the legislature feel that is appropriate to hold a municipality to as a standard of reasonable maintenance reasonable care and not as a guarantor of you know that there's not ever going to be any damage to somebody's property. Answer your question Alderman Bellinger? Yes thank you. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? We'll call the roll on 2-5 through 2-8 on disallowance of the claims. First, call the roll. Point of order, Mayor. I'm sorry. Um, could you frame the motion? I'm not sure which vote will. Is, is this a vote to, to support Alderman Ressler? No, to support the finances, Finance Committee's report Thank you. And, and disallow the claims. So now I vote. Carlson? Aye. Becker? No. Donahue? Aye. <clears throat> Hammond? Abstain. Heideman? No. Koth? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Manachek? Aye. Raisler? No. Red Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Abstain. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? No. Eight ayes, five noes, two abstain. Motion carries. Now we'll vote on one, two, two point one through two four plus two eight or 29 through 222. Any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Decker? Aye. 
Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kath? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Manachek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versey? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. <coughs> 3-1 through 3-8 will be referred. 4-1, a resolution from Alderman Hammond, Raisler, Heinemann, and Van Akron approving 2013 one-year annual action plan for community development block grants. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. I uh, first off would uh, make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. Any discussion on suspension only? All those in favor of suspension signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded to put the resolution upon its passage. Any discussion under the resolution? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kath? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Manichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Acker? <coughs> Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versey? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. 15 <coughs> ayes. Motion carries. 4 2 will lie over. 4 3 and through 4 5 will be referred. 5 1 reports from committee. Report of committee from salary and grievance recommending filing resolutions to extend staffing levels. Uh, limitations now in place for firefighters. Alderman Born. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, would make, I would request uh, that this be sent back to salary and grievances. I was unable to appear at that meeting last week because of a family situation that came up suddenly. I did contact the chairman of the committee and he uh, uh, talked to the committee about uh, holding the document for a future meeting and they saw fit not to. Uh, I think it's kind of been the practice since I've been on the council that when an alderman uh, has a document going into a committee and they're not able to be there, that it's been a courtesy in the past that that document be held if the alderman requests it. One that comes to mind very recently when, uh, when alderman uh, uh, Lewandowski was out for his health reasons, uh, he had a document at the Public Works Committee, and Alderman Heideman, I believe, held that document for three consecutive meetings, and the committee agreed to it to hold that until Alderman Lewandowski could appear. I mean, we ended up filing the document, but at least we extended the courtesy for Alderman Lewandowski to be there and talk about his document. So I, uh, uh, I was somewhat disappointed. I not only uh, contacted Chairman uh, Raisler, but I also contacted the manager of human resources and let her know that I was not gonna be able to be there. Uh, so uh, I would uh, just request the courtesy that this go back to the Salary and Grievance Committee and be put on the agenda for their February 11th meeting when I could attend, thank you. Is that a motion? Th that's, a, that's a motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded to re-refer to uh, Salary and Grievance. Who seconded that please? First. University. Is there any discussion on the motion? Clerk will call a roll on the motion. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kath? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Manachek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versey? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. 15 ayes to re-refer. Motion carries. 5-2 from an RC from strate strategic planning, fiscal planning, recommending filing resolutions directing chief administrative officer and human resources manager and fire chief to develop a plan for unpaid firefighters. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Accept, moved and seconded to accept and adopt the committee report. Under discussion. Alderman Board. <clears throat> Thank you again, Mayor Van Akron. Uh, the reason I came forward with this resolution in the first place was uh, 
I thought we were going at the strategic fiscal planning meetings uh, because of the budgetary difficulties that we're going to be having in 14 and 15 that uh, the chairman and the committee members were looking for possible suggestions uh, for various departments where possibly we could come up with uh, uh, some recommendations. And I came up with this resolution after talking to Chief Herman. Uh, I called him up a uh, week or two before I put this resolution in. And uh, I mentioned to him that the budgetary problems that we may be having in 14 and 15. And uh, I asked him what he was considering doing because of the budgetary constraints in 14 and 15. And he said, uh, well, we may have to close a fire station or fire stations. And from previous discussions last year, if we were gonna close a couple of fire stations, that would be, mean building a fire station uh, centrally located and the, the cost estimates on that initially were around $4 million. Uh, in the past, this council and some other councils, the last three or four years, have been unwilling to close a fire station. And what, that, what happens when you close a fire station and you lay off the people, those are always the people that were the last people hired by the fire department, which happens to be our paramedics, and that puts the good service that we get from our ambulance service in jeopardy because we may not have enough paramedics. So in lieu of that, of possibly closing a fire station, I came up with this resolution that asked that uh, when some of the firefighters retire, and again, I'm saying the firefighters, the gentlemen that have been with the, with the fire department for many years, uh, when they retire, possibly looking into an, uh, a hybrid type of fire department, which would be a partly paid full, on uh, full time, and then a part time on-call uh, on firefighting personnel. And I asked very specifically in what I was looking for, uh, for the chief administrative officer, the manager of human resources, and the fire chief to look into some very specific things. And uh, I wasn't prejudging this by any means, but the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee was looking for suggestions from aldermen for things to do about our budget crunch in 14 and 15. And I was kind of disappointed that I was kind of summarily dismissed uh, that they wanted to file this without even looking into this. And again, I'm not prejudging it, and I don't think the council should prejudge it. The only thing that this is going to cost to do the study is some staff time. And after the, after the uh, research is done by those individuals that I mentioned, it's going to go back to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. That report would go back to them for vetting. And then it would also go to the Committee of the Whole for the entire council to consider. So if, if we're really looking for suggestions from, from the aldermen as to what we can possibly do to ease this budget crisis in, in 14 and 15, this is a suggestion that at least I think we should research. And again, it's going to be staff time. It's not going to be dollars. And what I'm asking for is very specific. And it may be somewhat time consuming, but you know, I don't know what we're gonna do with the fire department and, and even other departments, the library and the police department for 14 and 15. This is just a possible alternative to having to close fire stations and lay off people. And that's why I would like it researched. I also, a couple of days ago, got an unsolicited call from an alderman over in Manitowoc and apparently he got my resolution off of the web and indicated that he and a couple of other aldermen in Manitowoc are thinking very seriously of at least having the research done over there because they've got the same problems, budget problems. In fact, Manitowoc budgetarily, I believe for the upcoming years is in worse shape we, than we are. And uh, there was an article in the, in the uh, Manitowoc paper recently where the fire chief over in Manitowoc for 2013 was asking an additional $309,000 for his budget. And he's, he mentioned to the Common Council and the mayor over there that if he didn't get the $309,000 for 2013, he was gonna have to close fire stations and lay people off. Well, as it turned out, the, uh, the Common Council and the mayor over there said, Chief, I guess you're gonna have to do what you're gonna have to do. 
But in the 11th hour, this article was dated November 21st from the, from the Herald Times in Manitowoc. Between November 21st and December 1st, apparently the chief found $309,000 in his budget so that he didn't have to lay off firefighters over there or close a fire station. And I guess he did that by delaying hiring and shifting some dollars around. So uh, I don't want to be in the, in the usual predicament when we get into situations with the fire department that the chief recommends closing stations and laying people off. Uh, I, 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 it, I don't think it's going to work. I don't think the community is going to accept it. This is an alternative. And I think, uh, you know, I would appreciate it if the council tonight would at least vote to go through with the study, bring it back to public protection and safety in, in March, and, uh, and then to the Committee of the Whole, and we can take a look at the numbers. I know I, uh, I gave this resolution to Alderman Hammond before I, uh, before I submitted it to the council, and Alderman Hammond uh, at the time was very interested in number C on the document where it says a detailed cost-benefit analysis detailing the possible costs and cost savings of a partially paid on staff for the Sheboygan Fire Department. So I would ask my, my former council members tonight to vote not to file this and at least have the chief administrative officer, our HR director, and our fire chief uh, spend some time and come back with a report that we can digest and make an intelligent decision. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the reason I didn't support this was the same reasons I have indicated is, in my mind, this wasn't a request for a feasibility study. Yes, I would love to see what the cost benefit of doing something like this would be, but it very clearly states that this, they, that this would happen starting January 14th with the first firefighters to be hired April four, or mid-April of, of 14. I don't know if that's a, the right timeline. Why are we as a council again dictating personnel to our department heads? Um, we haven't given the chief any um, idea of what we would expect for response times. Um, I don't know if this is feasible or not, but I'm happy to take a look at the cost benefit, but this thing goes a lot further than, than just cost benefit. It takes it to a point where when you look at the, the resolves, if you will, um, where we're hiring these folks on, on, on April, in April of 2014, and we haven't even gotten through the point where we're looking at the cost benefit. So if we're just going to focus on that, let's have that conversation and have the, have the chief put it together. Um, but if we're going to mandate to him that this is going to happen April, 4, or April 2014, I can't support that. Board. Uh, thanks for your comments, Alderman Hammond. The reason I put a timeline on it, that is part of what I want the chief and the chief administrative officer and our, our HR res, uh, manager of human resources to come back with. That would be part of the feasibility study is when, uh, as the, the A through F down there cover, uh, uh, the timeline is, is, is just a suggestion. Uh, and as I said, I'm not prejudging this. After we do a cost benefit analysis, it may not be feasible. All I'm looking for is an alternative to we're gonna close fire stations, lay off people, jeopardize the staffing for the ambulance service, and uh, and I, I just think we need an alternative to the same scenario all the time if closed stations lay off people. Uh, and this is at least an alternative. Is it after the report is done, then we're, we're in a much better uh, position to judge whether this is going to fly or not. I made it specific on purpose. And, I, and, I, and if we make a decision on this, I want it to be well thought out, both cost-wise and public safety-wise. Thank you. Alderman Donahue. Um, I have several uh, difficulties with this uh, particular resolution. I start with number one. It is true that the city is going to, has continued to face and will continue to face very serious budgetary constraints, budgetary questions, and uncertainty about actions in Madison, and uncertainty about uh, all sorts of issues that require this council, along with department heads, and with the mayor to think strategically about how we use our limited resources. A plan like this is not a part of that strategic thinking because it's too narrow, because it focuses in, number one, just on one department, 
Number two, on one possible scenario to solve a problem in one particular department. We can't really intelligently evaluate that particular solution unless we're looking at the city as a whole. Without a vision, the people perish. We've heard that over and over again. The vision is for the whole city. It is not just for three retiring firefighters. So that is my, my concern number one. Concern number two is what do we mean by paid on-call firefighters? Now, Alderman Bourne has said, it's just staff time that we're going to be using here. It's not money. Well, staff time is money. And it is the fire chief, and it is HR, and it is the chief administrative officer, and it is the city attorney, because this resolution requires a thorough and comprehensive plan that goes way beyond anything that resembles a feasibility study as to what is paid on call. Are we going to have somebody sitting at home paying that person $10 or $11 an hour because he or she is not going to be working? That person is going to be on call. Or is it going to be, as we do with our wonderful volunteer firefighters throughout the county, and, and these folks are terrific. I have spoken <laughs> at every single volunteer fire department in this county, and those are wonderful people who do an incredible job. But is that what we're looking at? And I think that if, I mean, the feasibility study, if we were to do anything, would be just to make those definitions, num number one. Number two, figure out how much that would cost. Number three, figure out if you can hire those people. And then number four, did you read the Chief's October through December report? On October 1st, my birthday, no relation here, there were 18 separate fire calls. Now, I know that was an unusual day, and if you read through the whole report, clearly it was an unusual day, but firefighting is all about unusual circumstances. And for that reason, just even this tiny piece of a, quote, feasibility study is really not that. So we really, and I appreciate the thought and the time and the effort that Alderman Bourne put into this resolution because it's pretty detailed. We're going to get a detailed outline. We're going to have a listing and detailed explanation of ch all changes to ordinances, resolutions, agreements, policies, and procedures in order to implement such a transition. Um, we're going to have a detailed cost-benefit analysis, recommend, recommendations on optimum ratio of full-time to part-time, proposed job descriptions, um, and any other information. So clearly, Alderman Bourne and the other alder persons who sponsored this, this uh, resolution did put a lot of time and effort into it, and I appreciate that. Frankly, all of us are going to have to put that kind of time and effort, maybe not to this detailed level, but we're going to have to do that if we're going to address our budget problems as they come up in, 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 uh, in 2014. So this is piecemeal. It does require a lot of time. Time is money. And for those reasons, I think that this is a distraction, with all due respect to Alderman Bourne and, and the other older persons, this is a distraction. We need to focus on the real target, we can't take our eyes off of the prize, which is how do we make the city run financially? What do citizens want from us? How are we gonna do it all? And I think those are the kinds of discussions that we need to be having in the next year or so. Thank you, Alderman Donahue. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I share the same concerns as Alderman Bourne does about 2000, 2014 and 2015. There is. Uh, um, things that need to be done and things that need to be addressed. But uh, for this body, I just wanted to let people know that I did receive the uh, formal former RFP from Bernie Romer on the study for the fire department. I'm looking at bringing that back as a resolution and amending it. I will certainly pass it along to you for you to look at before I do so. Um, I think rather than doing um, an approach like this, taking one area or uh, one narrow um, thing with, with the fire department. I, I would like to have a third party again uh, look at the entire operation, take the politics, the emotions, and the biases out of it, and come back and, and look and see if there's some opportunity for savings or efficiencies. And um, you know, as a body, if we've got the courage to pass that, then I think we should have the courage to adopt whatever comes back um, in a timely and responsible manner too, whether that's hiring more, closing the station, consolidating, paid on call, not, you know, whatever that is. But um, 
that's why I'm not going to support this because I think there's a, a better way to, to look at the, the whole department and see if there might be something better for us. Thank you. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Seeing none, all clerk will call the roll. Heideman? Nope. Koth? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. Manachek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? No. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? No. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? You get a vote twice. Thank you. I'll go by this. Motion carries. Motion carries. Yes, it does. I have three reported committee from law and licensing recommending denying beverage license number 6744. Alderman Vanda William. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to actually um, refer this back to law and licensing. Second. So move and second to refer this document back to law and licensing. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 5-4, Committee of the Whole recommending authorizing and appropriating city officials to execute combined dispatch intergovernmental cooperative agreement. Alderman with pleasure, Alderman Hammond. Um, actually, Mr. Mayor, I was just going to ask if we can take 5-4 and 5-5 five, five together. Um, um, they're both basically the same document. Sure. Finance came with no recommendation. We had four people, two had to abstain. So that's why there's no recommendation, but I leave the um, Alderman Bourne for the committee as a whole. Alderman Bourne. Thank you. Uh, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage. Any discussion? And 5-5. Five, five. And 5-5 five, five will be, committee will be accepted in. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to uh, thank Don Hammond for the going above and beyond and getting this back on track and uh, uh, coming to a complete resolution, even though it may have taken a few years of his life away from him. You know. <laughs> but thank you for doing that. I've got a different take on this whole thing. I found this whole <laughs> exercise rather frustrating and uh, extremely disappointing. Um, I thought this was going to be a shining example of intergovernmental cooperation. Instead, what I saw was intergovernmental extortion. Uh, first, the county came to us with a $5.7 million offer that uh, we should borrow that much money, and um, I don't know what that was for. Uh, maybe it was for an addition to the ivory tower. I don't know what that was for. But then it went down to $4 million, then it went down to $3 million, and now we're at $2.5 million. And I called my county supervisor when it was still at 5.7 million and said, uh, where do you stand on this? And uh, he told me, I support it. It's a good deal for the city. I'm sure you will warm up to it. Um, I didn't uh, you know, have uh, very warm feelings for that uh, comment to me and uh, I still am not warm to that whole thing. And uh, what really bothers me is that we've got a option where we could do it for $400,000 basically at the new facility that the police just built three years ago. So I take a strong view on uh, tax dollars, city tax dollars, and for uh, the county supervisors that represent the city, um, the city individuals, the taxpayers, they pay county taxes as well. So it just really bothers me that um, you know, that that was not even an option. We had a, a joint meeting in September down at Blue Harbor, and I thought that the council and the county board supervisors would sit at a table and we would vet each different option, idea, um, you know, let the public in on it and see how it was gonna work. And um, that was nothing but, uh, you know, being lectured to and, um, you know, having uh, directives, you know, from the county. I asked why can't we look at the city option, you know, because it's certainly much cheaper and, um, and they said that's not even a starting point. We will not even discuss it, won't put it on the table at all and have anything to do with it. So it was just completely shut down. So the intergovernmental intergovernmental cooperation, certainly, you know, that spirit wasn't there at that meeting. 
I think the only thing that that was for that meeting was so that they could pose for holy pictures. So after being lectured and dictated to, um, you know, we're down to where we're at right now. And we've got just a cavalier disregard for the taxpayer dollars. Uh, we're ignoring common sense, basic math, simple economics, and logic. So we're going to take 12 to 13 years for the city pack taxpayers to realize the full potential of combined dispatch at an inflated cost of approximately $2.6 million. We could have achieved the exact same thing in one to two years at a cost of approximately 40, 400,000 at the police facility. And the, the last issue that was brought up was we can't have it at the police facility because it's not a hardened facility. Well, I went and did some research, and um, I've got this document here, a staff brief on 911 communications. And when a call is placed to 911, it is routed to a public safety answering point, or a PSAP. I asked the question, how many PSAPs are there in the state of Wisconsin? There's over 150 of them. You can imagine there's at least 72, with each county having its own. And uh, then there's the, the, was the university system. Uh, there's a federal one at Fort McCoy. But it adds up to there's over 150. Uh, I asked three different respected individuals who are experts in this field how many of those facilities are hardened. And nobody could give me an answer other than to say it was very rare due to the extreme cost of having a hardened facility. So um, I don't have an exact number. They didn't have one, but they said it was extremely rare. So to use the excuse that we have to go to the county because it's a hardened facility, I think is just a facade as well. So for an additional $2.6 million over 12 or 13 years, I think it is you know, ridiculous. And um, I'm just extremely disappointed in this whole process in the way it went down. I will, however, be voting in favor of this uh, because uh, for the greater good, the county residents, the city residents deserve combined dispatch. It's gone on way too long, 40, 50 years, however, and seeing this process, how it works, I'm surprised it's not still going on and that we're at a resolution today because, you know, it wasn't pretty and I didn't appreciate it, so. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. I gotta follow that. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of a different, different twist. Uh, it was quite a process, I will uh, you know, certainly give you that. But um, you know, with any of these types of things, when it's been this ingrained for 40 some years, there's gonna be some give and take that goes along with it. So um, is it a perfect? Nope. Um, does it get us to our end goal? Absolutely. Um, you know, some of these things are obviously a lot more important than just dollars and cents. Dollars and cents, of course, are important. But I think both chiefs um, and the sheriff would, would talk about the public safety aspect of this, too, and how important that is to the end. So, um, again, uh, as I mentioned on Thursday night, I just want to thank everybody that was involved with this. There was a lot of people, a lot of meetings, um, a lot of back and forth, a lot of times where, quite frankly, we walked away going, I don't think this is going to happen, um, but it did. So um, again, I, I appreciate everybody's support on this document and uh, look forward to this getting carried through by the end of 2015. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. Uh, this actually could have been done about three years ago uh, for about $2 million. <clears throat> but the hang up on that was the question of supervision uh, the number of supervisors they wanted to hire. I see the document now. We've got it down to four. I forgot what it was back then. It was about eight or nine. But we could have actually done it for about 200000 Now it's two point, I'm sorry, not 200000 $2 million. Now it's $2.5 million. And I have to agree with Alderman Bellinger that we could have done this. And I've got the list right in front of me here. It's actually $361,855 if we could have had it we could have had it over at the police department. And I believe the vote back in April by the county board, uh, the president of the county board at that time uh, uh, took that vote on the basis, I believe in April, that it was gonna go at the police, it was gonna be at the police department. 
And then all of a sudden, he and a number, a number of other county supervisors said, nope, we can't do it over at the police department. It's not a hardened facility. It's not convenient if we ha want to have meetings. And so we got to build it over at the uh, courthouse, and it's going to cost, as Alderman Bellinger started out, many, many more millions of dollars, and now we're down to $2.5 million. And, you know, we're, we're doing all this bonding. It's going to be uh, probably $2.5 million for... Uh, for, to build this onto the county courthouse. And then as I was talking about earlier, apparently if we're gonna close fire stations, it's gonna be four million bucks or at least four million bucks for a new centrally located fire station. When does it end? When does the city's debt end? Uh, I too uh, am going to vote for this tonight. It's one of these where I'm, I'm definitely gonna hold my nose. Uh, combined dispatch was on my bucket list. Uh, uh, when I, when I got on the council, um, seeing that this come to fruition, and even before Alderman Hammond was on board, there were several of Aldermen, myself, Alderman Gisha, Alderman Hammond, and Alderman Verhasselt, who used to be in Alderman Koth's district, that kept this thing on, I hate to use the word life support, but that's what it was. We got uh, at least the votes back then, I think it was in 2008, to keep the discussions going when they looked like they were gonna be dead. So I'm gonna reluctantly vote for this tonight because uh, eventually I think we're gonna see some benefit, but we certainly could have done this for, for $361,000 and had a wonderful dispatch center, but for the convenience of the county, uh, we have to spend $2.5 million. Thank you. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mayor. I wanna thank Alderman Hammond for um, all the work he did on this particular topic and I'm quite proud to be one of the people that's going to be voting to finally get combined dispatch. To me public safety and protection is the, of the utmost support, importance in this city. Um, taking care of our citizens when it seems that the majority of the time this council is either attacking our fire department, our police department, or our ambulance service. So I, I would have great pride. I, I don't like the deal, the whole way, deal as the way it went down, but I'm quite proud of the fact that after 40 some years, we're actually going to be having combined dispatch, cutting down the problems when there are calls to be made and, and perhaps saving a number of lives and making our city a lot safer. And that's what our taxpayers and our constituents are asking for. Um, our times are tough right now. I'm sure everyone's read the paper this weekend and things are not getting Better, they're getting worse so we need to address that and it's refreshing to be in support of our our um, public safety and departments in our city thank you thank you any other discussion seeing none clerk will call the roll Lassard aye Lewandowski aye Matichek aye Raisler abstain Van Akron abstain Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Abstain. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kath? Aye. 12, three abstain. Motion carries. Five, six report committee from salary and grievance who met and discussed amended 2012 benefit proposal. Alderman Basler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Then move and seconded that the committee report be accepted and adopted. Any discussion? <coughs> Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. Uh, Chairman Raisler, uh, would you, I read the document, uh, but I'm just wondering uh, if you could explain it to the rest of the council while we're going down to a $600 payback for the part-timers, what, what sure. was behind that? Thank sure. You. The, uh, th this is a bio program for not going on our health insurance. And um, before the part-timers were actually eligible um, for a full $1,200, and it was the committee's recommendation that um, they have the option of actually now purchasing the insurance for 50% of what the premium was before it was all paid. And it was the committee's recommendation that they would then receive 50% of the buyout instead of the full 1,200. So it's kind of a making it uh, even. If I could just follow up, sure. uh, about how many people does this affect? Uh, I think it was five to five to eight, four. Okay. or someone's saying four. So I would 
four people it will affect. Thank you. Yeah, part timers. Any other discussion? See none, the clerk will call the roll. Lewandowski? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kath? Aye. Lassard? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 6 1 ordinances introduce Alderman Hammond, Raisler, Carlson, and Donahue, amending municipal codes to provide for petty cash for transit. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, I would uh, ask for a motion, or excuse me, uh, need to suspend, so a motion to suspend the rules. Second. So we move and seconded to suspend the rules. Any discussion on suspension only? All those in favor of suspending signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. I uh, move to put the ordinance upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? Aye. Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kath? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lewandowski? Aye. 15. Motion carries. 6 to an ordinance by Alderman Amanda will be referred. Matters laid over, resolution number 120 1213 by Alderman Heideman, authorizing executing a one year lease for agricultural property in the town of Wilson. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. I put the resolution on, I make a motion to put the resolution on as passed. Second. Yes. It's been moved and seconded to. Put the resolution upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Other matters, city attorney? There are none. The next matter is? Motion to adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. We're adjourned.